This is the Free Heal Life Podcast number two, and I'm your host, Josh Madsen. Checking in here from the Free Heal Life Telemark shop here in Salt Lake City, Utah. And it's good to be here with you again. Week number two. Here we here we go. We did it. So uh, I'm just chiming in uh, by myself today again, just as uh, I get this thing rolling and uh, just thought it'd be a good opportunity just to kind of get some thoughts out and maybe talk a little bit about one of the most common topics that seems to come up around here or around telemark skiing, that is. But uh, yeah, it's getting a little cold here in Salt Lake these days and we're getting close to close to opening and and uh, some of the resorts are starting to think about that so pretty excited for that and hopefully we'll get some good stable backcountry this year to do some skiing but kind of the thought I had this morning was is Telemark really dead and this seems to be the question that comes up the most often and for someone like me, it's kind of a obviously an interesting topic, but I'm around it so much and I've been around it uh, as a business for almost 20 years and I've been a telemark skier for over 25 years and uh, the idea that it's dead is is kind of funny to me because I think of dead as a very final statement that there are no more that something is extinct that it doesn't exist on the earth uh, that it has gone away and that to me is probably the most interesting thing is uh, those that are making such a final statement are also generally not telemark skiers themselves and generally the people writing about these topics or bringing it up uh, oftentimes might not, as far as I can tell, may not even know <laughs> telemark skier themselves. So it's an interesting topic. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll come, I'm sure we'll talk about this frequently um, as a, uh, you know, it's it's something that that comes up often. So when we opened the telemark, uh, when we opened the Free Hill Life Telemark shop here uh, about five seasons ago in Salt Lake, I think that was kind of the most common question: was how are you guys actually going to survive? Isn't telemark dead? <laughs> and uh, I remember thinking, man, that's so funny that people actually think it's dead, and that there are no people out there. Um, me personally, I'd, I just spent probably the last decade before that traveling around and, uh, I was making telemark ski movies for a little while. I was the editor at telemark skier magazine and it seemed like everywhere I went, there was this passionate group of telemark skiers around, around the world. You know, I was going to Europe once a year or once every other year. Uh, the festivals were great over there, and it was amazing to see kind of everybody coming out of the woodwork and coming to these festivals. Uh, I think some of the first ones I went to were in Livigno, in, in northern Italy, uh, Stubai, in Austria, um, and uh, there's some great people putting on some awesome festivals, uh, like Richard Scherf uh, is putting on a bunch of, He's he's been putting on kind of his little testival circuit for a long time over there, probably since 2005 or before that. Um, Lavinia's kind of gone up and down. I don't know if that's actually still going on. Uh, you know, more recently I've gone over to France. The Black Shoes Festival was amazing. Telemark Only Festival. Uh, in, in the States, up until a few years back, we had NATO in the Northeast. Um that went for 40 years and uh, we ran some events out in the West free Hill life cup. Anyways, point being 
everywhere I go, there's telemark skiers. But what I what I wasn't seeing was um, kind of this idea of a gathering place on a regular basis. Um, you know, meetups are great. Uh, you know, the idea that there's festivals is great. All these things are great because it's shown that we're being proactive. We're getting together. We're doing things. But kind of going back to the retail side, when people ask me, especially when they come in, in the Free Hill Life shop here and say, is Telemark dead or is it dying? The conclusion that I've come to is, and, and why people's perception is this, is Telemark itself is obviously not dead. Telemark retail in the way that we once bought and sold Telemark gear is more or less dead. And what I mean by that is most of us used to have a local shop near us. And I can think of countless, countless, countless places uh, that were backcountry shops uh, that sold Telemark gear through the 80s, the 90s, and the early 2000s. And as and I think this is kind of where people sort of come across this idea that that it died where they once were able to go buy stuff it now has been replaced in most cases by alpine touring equipment and that sort of puts things in a weird perspective for people because they're like well if telly telly must be dying because this shop is no longer selling it. But I think what people need to realize is the whole basis for the shops that carried Telemark equipment was they were backcountry stores. And in the 80s, the 90s, and the early 2000s, primarily Telemark equipment was used to access the backcountry. Uh, Craig Dossie, who's a friend of mine uh, that ran Kular Magazine for many years, really was the guy that coined the term term earn your turns uh he once said it perfectly he's like backcountry skiing in america grew through telemark and i think that that really re has resonated with me over the years and trying to understand what what happened what is happening and this idea that the telemark's dead so kind of going back to it you know the objective, if you're a business owner of a backcountry shop, is to obviously give shelf space to the thing that's the most popular and how you're going to make money. And so there really wasn't a, you know, some of them tried to carry Telemark and some tried to carry AT and both kind of went went together sometimes. But in a lot of cases, you know, they they went with the hot item at the time and and kind of once Dinafit really came on the scene and then, you know, uh, other and I'm obviously not an expert in, in Alpine touring by any means. But, you know, my perception outside looking in was was sort of this, uh, you know, more things became available and people started using them. The gear became better um, in terms of if you wanted to be an alpine skier and go hiking. So that makes sense that uh, the retail portion sort of died. But with that said, that's exactly why I wanted to open up a Telemark shop. And I think that totally seems strange to people, uh, at least people that came in. I mean, that was my experience. People would come in and they'd be like, oh, that's so crazy. You're trying to open a Telemark ski shop. And I'm thinking to myself, why is that so weird? I mean, there's thousands and thousands of us all over the place that want to buy this gear and just like a ski shop you go if you're a skier you go to a ski shop if you're a snowboarder you go to a snowboard shop so it didn't seem that far-fetched of an idea to think hey i'm a telemark skier i'm going to go to a telemark shop where the people employed there are Telemark skiers. They're interested in the same things that you are. They can talk to you about the equipment. And, you know, it, it just didn't seem that far-fetched of a, of a concept. So um, that was basically it. And, and, and I think that uh, 
the second part to that that's really fascinating to me is that it sort of put uh, Telemark in this strange position because the average person that now goes to their local shop that once carried Telemark gear for them now is not carrying Telemark gear. And uh, I think a lot of these shops, sadly, you kind of started seeing the, over the last decade or so, you're starting to lose the shop guy, you know, quote unquote shop guy that is the diehard telly guy. And now, you know, nobody in the shop knows anything about Telemark. And so one thing I always hear, and the reason we end up getting a lot of business here in Salt Lake is people go into those shops that traditionally were the place they would find their equipment. And, you know, you get some young buck guy working at the, the, the backcountry store. And now he's saying, well, why do you telemark anymore? It's dead. You know, here's this thing. And, you know, they're pointing to this Alpine touring stuff. It immediately for the uneducated, puts telemark on this evolutionary plane with alpine touring and that is completely ludicrous because telemark is a downhill technique the alpine turn is a downhill technique they're completely different ways of descending the mountain they feel completely differently and the idea uh that somehow we want to lock our heel down when we get to the top to go down makes absolutely zero sense. I get why they're thinking that way. And, and I see this a lot is there's this misconception, especially probably worldwide, but especially here in, in North America where people say the word telemark and the automatic response is, oh, you like to climb uphill. Which is, uh, which is really funny. And kind of going back to my, my friend Craig Dosty, one of the funniest things is I'm, I call and yell at him often and tell him that it's his fault because, because Kular, his, his old magazine, was basically this, this chronicle of how to access the backcountry and he was using Telemark. <laughs> I really, truly think he sort of changed the way that we think of telemark skiing in america instead of thinking of it as a downhill nordic technique which is really the history of it uh it focused much more on the uphill the earn your turns aspect and in that sense i think people are still doing that in the retail space and and out there at large and they're start and they're thinking well the uphill we no longer we have evolved to being able to lock our heel at the top now once we've hiked up. And that that puts Telemark uh, in a place where, like I said, it's on the same evolutionary plane with alpine skiing. And people need to realize that these are two completely separate things. The reason that we are Telemark skiers is because of how the turn downhill feels. At least that's why I do it. Maybe you have something different out there that makes you interested in it. I don't know. All power to you. I'm just stoked that you're you're actually telemark skiing. But uh, please do not subscribe to the idea that telemark uh, has died because we have evolved into these amazing alpine touring beings in the world. Uh, in fact... I honestly think the future of, of, of Telemark, especially in the next 10 years, I think we're going to see a lot of growth actually from people in bounds, which is completely downhill focused. And I think that's where people are really realizing, uh, you know, my prediction, especially is you're going to see a lot of growth if, if we can get equipment to people in places like the Midwest of the, of the United States and, uh, especially these smaller hills where, you know, people are bored, there's not as much going on. Telemark adds an, uh, an incredible challenge for people that are trying to get into something new. And uh, I think that's an incredible opportunity for us to grow. Now, going back to the point of retail, Telemark retail dying, there's such 
few opportunities to find equipment in the areas that need them the most. And I think that's what we really need to tackle moving forward uh, in order to help more people uh, get into Telemark, try it. Uh, and, you know, it's going to resonate with some and it's not going to resonate with the with others. And uh, I think that's the best part about it. I always say Telemark is a personality choice. It's uh, not a logistical one. Um, it's hard. People look at it and uh, that's probably, you know, one of the deterrents. But I think the people with the right types of personalities look at Telemark skiing. And when they see a good Telemark skier, there's just something about it. And it really just makes your brain start wondering how, how it all works and the mechanics behind it. So anyways, uh, that was kind of, you know, I just wanted to kind of chime. I thought I was rolling by myself today and, and wanted to chime in on this subject. These are some of the topics that come up constantly here when we're working at Free Hill Life in Salt Lake and conversations I'm having with people on the phone, um, you know, gear manufacturers, uh, people like that. And I uh, definitely want to get uh, some of those people on the podcast in the future uh, because that's, I think it would be really cool for you guys to kind of tap into some of these people's brains and hear where they've, they've come from, what they're up to, what they're making, uh, their philosophies on the whole thing. But I thought today would be a good opportunity to talk about why Telemark is not dead, not even close. And I think we're just getting started. Uh, we, Telemark is, has the richest history of ski history because it all started with moving from transportation on to free healed equipment and the Telemark term being one of the first techniques that, that came out of that. And that's a awesome, awesome, awesome story to know that what we're doing today is what they were doing in the 1860s. So I'll leave we I'll leave you with that, and uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on on uh, on the subject, and I'd love to hear your thoughts in general. Let me know if I'm doing a good job, and let me know if you're enjoying the podcast thus far. I know we're only a couple episodes in. Uh, I did set up an email podcast at freeheallife.com so any feedback shoot my way and uh, definitely subscribe and we'll keep this thing rolling so thanks for listening and signing off until next time we'll see you later spread telemark always my friends